Lightning Arrow, Ice Shot, and even Tornado Shot are not builds that you re-roll into. They are League Starters. These skills, Tornado Shot in particular, have received the label of the skills with the highest entry cost. I will do my best today to lift off this stigma surrounding these skills, shining light on them so that we can appreciate them for what they are, not for their wrongfully earned labels. Thomas J. Watson said, follow the path of the unsafe and dependent thinker. Expose your ideas to the danger of controversy. Speak your mind and fear less the label of crackpot than the stigma of conformity. He was probably playing melee in Sanctum when he said that. In an attempt to lift off the stigma surrounding tornado shot and bow builds in general, I leveled to 90 deathless in the Zizzerin Gauntlet playing tornado shot. The Gauntlet is a temporary hardcore solo cell phone league with extra modifiers on every zone. The perfect environment to filter out bad builds from great builds. This build is a classic take on the famous Tornado Shot Deadeye, but you can safely play Lightning Arrow or Ice Shot without changing anything but the gem and it will feel good. In this build, I have made a massive effort to optimize the leveling tree. I tested all potential skills and pathing while leveling so that you can enjoy probably the fastest progression you've ever had at league start, with both a low amount of pressure on gear and a manageable amount of passives to respec later on. Now, before we go over the path of building together, we must first look at how Tornado Shot functions. Tornado Shot fires a piercing shot. We will call those primary projectiles. Once those primary projectiles reach the targeted location, each primary projectile will turn into a tornado releasing secondary projectile in all directions. These secondary projectiles will fade over time. By default, Tornado Shot fires one primary projectile, which releases in three secondary projectiles. But in our case, we will fire much more. Increasing projectile count increases both the number of primary and secondary projectiles. Projectile speed will increase the distance that the secondary projectiles will travel before fading out. Only one primary projectile can hit the target each time you attack. But the secondary projectiles have a special way to shotgun. Only one secondary projectile that originate from a tornado can hit an enemy. But if we have two secondary projectiles that originate from different tornadoes, they can both hit the enemy. Therefore, additional projectiles on tornado shot not only increases the coverage of the skill, but also increases the damage substantially. I have tested the average number of hits for Tornado Shot with a self-poison setup. As a result, I was able to adjust the path of building's Tornado Shot DPS numbers to better reflect the actual DPS of the skill in-game. Now, we're ready to move on to the PUB. I have added multiple trees to refer to as you progress. Likewise, I have added multiple item sets. You should use the low mapping item sets until level 90 and then swap to the medium budget mapping but nothing stops you from getting gear upgrades before level 90 though. For the skill section, I believe that every gem swap is documented in there. You simply scroll down as you progress further. Small note though, is that second wind is a reward from the library. If you would rather skip the library, you can skip second wind until act 6, where you get it from doing Lily's quest. As for your main skill, whether you are playing tornado shot, ice shot or lightning arrow, every gem is the same except for the main skill. Speaking of these skills, we can safely equip them after Merciless Labyrinth, which should be just before maps. If you decide to play them from the start, you will need to use greater multiple projectiles on them, and you will find that by doing so, your damage is much worse than if you use a Reign of Arrow instead, which is why I recommend sticking to Reign of Arrow until Merciless Labyrinth, where you grab Endless Ammunition, Master Fletcher, and Multi-Shot. So, while the playstyle of this build is straightforward and intuitive, the core mechanics behind it not so much. I will have a Discord server ready before launch so that we can help each other out as a community, whether it's to optimize some part of our builds or troubleshoot issues that we're facing. 
The link will be in the description, but to prevent any of those issues that could arise, let's go over them together. The first one is precise technique. It requires that your character has more accuracy than life. If you aren't sure whether you have too little accuracy, check your in-game offensive stats. The tree should entirely cover your accuracy requirement, roughly up until maps, but after that you will have to start getting some accuracy on your gear. Accuracy that you would need to have anyway as an attack build. You can refer to the different item sets in the items tab to help you. Another mistake which you can do is taking point blank and not using it properly. The radius for the most optimal damage increase from point blank is quite small. I have illustrated it in red here. You should at least always place your ballista inside that radius for single target. Blue zone is where your damage does not get increased from point blank. Shooting enemies outside of that zone will result in a small damage loss, gradually going down to 30% less damage against targets that are off screen. This is just something to be mindful of. Next up, we take this new mastery here, which gives 15% increased maximum life if we have no life modifiers on our chest. So make sure to not have any life modifiers on your chest. This probably means any life modifiers, such as flat life, increased life, but also life regeneration. Moving on, we have mana related issues. As you approach endgame, you will want to drop your mana flask for a better flask. To do so, you will need three things. An Exarch Implicit on your helmet to reduce the mana cost of attacks. Inspiration support on your main skill. And finally, the minus mana cost craft on some of your jewelries. By the way, something to remember is that to gain Inspiration charges, you need to spend mana with the skill linked to Inspiration support. You cannot have your main skill cost 0 mana. It has to cost at least 1. But if your main skill has more than 4 mana costs, you might start to have mana issues. You can balance the mana cost by recrafting the minus mana mod on your jewelry or using Catalyst. You can also use Blessed Orb on your helmet to decrease or increase the Eldritch Implicit. Just make sure that you are between the 1 and 4 mana cost range for smooth gameplay. This recording is starting to take longer than I anticipated, so let's quickly go over the optimization you can do in the early endgame. By default, the passive tree will give you most of everything you need for the build to feel good, such as spell suppress cap, life gain on hit, accuracy, reservation efficiency, uh, onslaught on kill, flask sustain, and movement speed. But if you can find these stats outside of the tree, such as on gear, you can have accuracy on jewelry, you can have life gain on hit on a synthesis based ring or elder or hunter rings, you can have spell suppress on your equipment. If you can get these stats on your gear, you will be able to refound the corresponding passives in the tree and reallocate them in cluster jewels, damage nodes or life nodes, which will increase your power level significantly. The end game is very flexible according to your gearing decisions. Uh, while this may sound daunting for some, remember that the tree will provide almost everything you need initially and that I will post a video in the near future explaining how to craft every piece of gear on this build. I will also have a build progression video out shortly after launch so that you can follow along as well as a more endgame PUB when I have more information on the state of the market in the Crucible League as well as the different scaling opportunities that come from the Crucible tree. On that note, the PUB and Discord is in the description. Like and subscribe and let's have a great league start.